In section 6.2, we're going to start talking about continuous probability distributions, and then we'll start talking about the standard normal distribution. So continuous probability distributions, there are infinitely many x values, and so we can't just have a table because um, we can't have a table with infinitely many things. So instead of having a table like we did in chapter 5, we're going to have a graph that represents the probability distribution. Okay, so there's really two really important properties about a graph of a continuous probability distribution. So the first thing is that the area under the graph of the probability distribution is equal to 1. Just like when we had tables, um, all the probability values had to add up to 1. Here, the area has to be equal to 1. Okay, and second, there's a correspondence between the probability between a range of x values and the area under the graph between those x values. And we'll do this in examples. So just know that the, the probability matches up with the area under the graph. So the idea is that we can find probabilities by finding areas. Okay, now the first type that we're going to talk about, um, and it's the only one that's not the normal distribution, is called a uniform distribution. So a continuous random variable has a uniform distribution if its values are spread evenly over the range of possibilities. So they're evenly spread. That's why it's called uniform. And the graph of a uniform has a rectangular shape. So on the next page, we have this example. And it says, an alarm will go off sometime in the next five minutes. So below is the graph of this uniform probability distribution. So um, along the x-axis, we have time. And along the y-axis, we have the probability of the alarm clock going off at that time. Okay, and it's uniform because you'll see all the probabilities are at point 2. Okay, now we know this is a valid probability distribution because the total area would be, well, this rectangle has a width of 5. Okay, this is 5. And a height of point 0.2. And 5 times 0.2 is 1, so the probabilities um, are equal to 1. Okay, so now we want to use area under the graph um, to find the probabilities of certain intervals. So the first asks, find the probability that the alarm will go off within the first two minutes. So that would be from time 0 to time 2, and that would be this part of the rectangle right there. Well, we want to find the area. Because remember, areas and probabilities correspond to each other. So the area of the rectangle I just shaded has a width of 2 and a height of 0.2. So we find the probability that it goes off within the first two minutes is 0.4, or 40%. Okay, now we want to find um, the probability that the alarm goes off between minutes 2 and 5. So that's actually... The rest, we want this rectangle right here that's not shaded. So that has a width of 3. It still has a height of 0.2. Right, this is 3 right here. And the height is 0.2. So this rectangle is 0.6, or there's a 60% chance that the alarm will go off uh, between two minutes 2 and 5. Now the last part says, find the probability that the alarm goes off at exactly three minutes. Now if we drew this, exactly three minutes would be a really thin line at three. And a thin line actually doesn't have any width. So the width of this line is zero. And so to find the area there, it's zero times 0.2, which is zero. Now you may be thinking, well that doesn't make sense. Um, it could go off at exactly three minutes, and it could, but... At exactly a time that it, the probability is so small that we consider it to be zero. So at an exactly a time, um, one value, it's always zero. And we say that on the next page. So for a probability distribution, 
of continuous data, the probability of exactly one value is always zero. So to have a non-zero probability, we're talking about an interval. So now looking at the second example, it says assume that packages are sent from the post office during one particular hour and that weights were uniformly distributed between 1.8 pounds and 11.8 pounds. Find the probability that a random package selected has a weight between 2.2 and 5.7 pounds. So we need to draw our uniform distribution. And remember, it has a rectangular shape if it's uniformly distributed. So that's the word that we really care about. Um, so we know it's uniformly distributed between 1.8 and 11.8. Now, we need to figure out where to put the height of our probability distribution. And remember, the rule is that the total area under the rectangle has to be 1. Now, the total area is going to be the length times the height. So we need to figure out now the length between 1.8 and 11.8. You know, this width, well, 11.8 minus 1.8, that's a length of 10. So if we divide both sides by 10, we get the height is equal to 0.1. So we have this graph right here, where we've got a rectangle where the height is 0.1, and the width is going from 1.8 to 11.8. Now we want to find the probability that it's between, so the weight is between 2.2, .2 in 5.7 pounds. So 2.2 would be let's say here in 5.7 we want to find the area of that rectangle. So first we'd have to find the width and to find the width of this part of the rectangle we would take 5.7 minus 2.2 .2, so we get a width of 3.5 And then the height is 0.1. So to get our probability, we take 3.5 times 0.1, which is 0.35. So there, there's a 35% chance that a randomly selected package would have a weight between 2.2 and 5.7 pounds. Okay, so that's all we're going to do with uniform distributions. Now we're going to talk about... Um, very special distributions called the normal distribution. And we've already talked a little bit in this class about um, normal distributions, bell-shaped curve. So a continuous random variable has a normal distribution if it's symmetric and bell-shaped. Now, you don't need to use this formula at all, but just to know where it comes from, there's actually a mathematical formula, an equation right here that involves E, and you can see lots of values. Um, but this equation actually gives this graph, and it's not something you'll need to use. You don't need to be scared by that equation, but just to see where it comes from. Now, for any normal distribution, there's two important things that we'll be interested in. Mu, which remember is the mean and sigma, the standard deviation. So whenever you have a normal distribution, you're going to want to know what's the mean and what's the standard deviation. Now, the standard normal, this word standard is really important. It's the normal probability distribution where the mean is always zero and the standard deviation is always one. Now, before we actually go into using it, um, here's a bunch of information of how we can use our calculator to calculate the probability um, between two values of a normal distribution. And there is a calculator video that goes along with this section, so you can find that on Moodle. Um, so to get to the normal distribution calculator, um, you're going to hit second vars, which is the distribution menu, and then we want to use the normal CDF distribution. So to find two prob find the probability between two values, 
you do normal CDF. This is for the standard normal distribution um, of A comma B. Now, sometimes we'll want to find the probability of X less than A. And we would just want a really small negative, or sorry, a really negative number. And so, you know, for the, our points of rounding and stuff, technically we'd want to go from negative infinity, but our calculator doesn't have negative infinity. So we can go from negative 1,000 up to whatever value we're doing. And if we need the probability of something greater than a value, we want to go A really to infinity, but again, our calculator doesn't do that. So if we go up to like a 1,000, that'll work for our purposes. Okay, so here's our example that we're going to work with with the standard normal distribution. So it says, given a set of brand new clocks, consider how fast or slow they're running, the clocks are, after 24 hours. Okay, so some clocks are running fast, some are running slow. So we're going to count the amount of time that they're off in seconds, and we're going to assume it's a normal distribution. The average time that the clocks are off is going is zero. The standard deviation is one. Okay, if a clock is running fast, the amount off is positive, and if it's running slow, we count the amount off as negative. So our first problem with this, it says, if we randomly choose one of the clocks, what's the probability that it'll be more than 1.5 seconds slow after 24 hours? Okay, so um, since we're talking about being slow, this is a negative value, negative 1.5. And being more slow would be everything to the left of that, everything more negative to that. Okay, so we want to find, what we're really finding is the probability that x is less than negative 1.5. So remember, when we want to do something less than, we start with negative 1,000 in our normal CDF, and we go up to negative 1.5. And if you put this in your calculator, remember, um, second vars, you're going to choose normal CDF, then we get point. Oh, six, seven. So the probability that a randomly chosen clock will be running more than 1.5 seconds slow after 24 hours is 0 0.067 or 6.7 percent. Now we want to find what's the probability that I'll be running more than 1.83 seconds fast after 24 hours. So here, more than, so if we look at 1.83 and more fast would be everything greater than that, positive. So we're looking for the probability that x is greater than 1.83. So again, we can use our calculator, the normal CDF, and we would go from 1.83 to 1,000. And when we put that in our calculator, we get... 0.034. So the probability that a randomly chosen clock will be running more than 1.83 seconds fast after 24 hours is 0.034 or 3.4 percent. Okay, then we can also, the third thing that we can do is talk about what's the probability that the clock will be running between 0.5 seconds and 1.4 seconds fast. So here we're looking for x to be bigger than 0.5 and less than 1.4. So the probability that x is between 0.5 and 1.4 seconds fast. So we can shade this in. We'd have 0.5, 1.4. We shade that in, and that's the probability, the area we're looking for. So on our calculator, the normal CDF, we can put in 0.5 comma 1.4 and we do this in our calculator we get 0.228 so the probability that a randomly chosen clock will be running between 0.5 seconds and 1.83 seconds faster of 24 hours is 0.228 or 22.8 percent now we can also work backwards so we might want to ask a question like, the owner of a clock company wants to claim the following on an advertising pamphlet. 90% of our clocks are guaranteed to be accurate within blank seconds after 24 hours. Okay, so we want to find the middle 90% of area under the normal distribution. So whatever it is, we don't know exactly where it is. Um, now remember, we know by... Um, 
the empirical rule that if we go one standard deviation out, it's 68%, and two standard deviations out on both sides, we get 95%. So it's going to be somewhere between one and two standard deviations out. We'll have some x values and negative x values, and we're saying, what's that x value, you know, that it's within that many seconds, fast or slow, that gives us this middle area to be 90%. Now, there's um, what's called the inverse normal distribution that would give us this value. And so on the calculator to find the inverse normal distribution, you're going to do um, second VARS and choose number three, inverse normal. Okay, now, um, it, for this calculator command, we have to input the total area to the left of the value we're looking for. So if we think about our situation, with our normal curve... And we want an x value and negative x such that this is 90%. Well, if that's 90%, remember it's symmetric, so either tail has to be 5%. So that means to the left of our x, everything to the left, there's actually 95% area. Okay, and we put this in as a decimal, so 0.95. So in our calculator, we're going to put inverse norm 0.95. And when you do that, you get 1.645. So that tells us that 90% of their clocks are guaranteed to be accurate within 1.645 seconds after 24 hours. Okay, so in this section, we um, dealt with the uniform distribution and the standard normal.